Last week, due to the pandemic, some high-profile films were again postponed. On the one hand, this affects Matt Reeves' The Batman, which will be delayed by a few months before it is released in cinemas in the US on October 1st, 2021. Also, DC's new movie The Flash is affected. But this one has been pushed forward by one month and is now scheduled to be released in early June 2022. The Sopranos sequel, The Saints of Newark, has also been pushed back a few months and is now scheduled to be released in March 2021. While the release of Will Smith's drama King Richard has been delayed by a whole year to November 2021, the still nameless Elvis Presley movie starring Tom Hanks has been pushed back by just one month to November 2021. According to current information, Christopher Nolan's Tenet and Wonder Woman 1984, both which are scheduled for release in a few months, are not postponed. To what extent this will actually happen remains to be seen. We will of course keep you informed about further delays from the film world. Even before The Batman was postponed from summer to fall 2021, director Matt Reeves gave a short interview to Daily Beast. Among other things, it became clear that the 53-year-old filmmaker wanted to give the new Batman a very personal touch and even managed to make the superhero film stand out from its predecessors. When asked how he wanted to highlight the film, Reeves drew a parallel between his Planet of the Apes franchise and Batman, because they have one thing in common – both were the director's dream project. He literally said, The way I love apes is the way that I love Batman, actually. The only two franchises that might have been something I would have connected with, amazingly are the ones I was approached by. That's been a very special thing. I can't say about almost any other franchise that they would have been the right fit for me. Moreover, the director also hints that the pause created by the coronavirus could prove to be quite advantageous for the movie. Because whenever he thinks back to his past movies, he always finds something positive about the time they had a production standing still. It remains to be seen when the production of The Batman, which last took place in London, can be continued. The new release date of The Batman is supposed to be on October 1st, 2021. A few days ago, a new picture of the Jurassic World set was published on Twitter. Surprisingly, it doesn't show a tropical island like most of the offshoots, but a snowy landscape which is untypical for the Jurassic World series. At least that's what the picture by director Colin Trevorrow suggests, who posted this picture as part of a Twitter trend of celebrities at work. Fans of the franchise, however, will probably be more interested in the fact that the new Jurassic World film will take place at least partially in ice and snow. An appearance of T-Rex and co in the icy landscape is rather unrealistic. According to the current state of science, there were far fewer dinosaurs living in the Arctic and most of their fossils have not even been found yet. Apart from the change in landscape, there are also other news, namely, the published picture shows Maisie Lockwood, played by Isabella Sermon. If you want to know more about Lockwood's background story, you should definitely take a look at the second part of Jurassic World. The release date of Jurassic World Dominion is currently June 11, 2021. Currently, due to the virus, all video streams of the common providers run with a reduced bitrate. This also applies to the streaming giant Netflix, which has announced that its streams will be throttled for 30 days for the time being. This period has now already expired for some time and will remain for the time being, as the company confirmed on request. Similarly, competitors Amazon Prime Video and Disney Plus are also continuing to apply the same measures. So what the major providers all have in common is that they currently require less bandwidth and therefore pay less. In short, the streaming providers save a lot of money in Corona times. While Amazon Prime Video and Apple TV Plus, for example, provide high-quality content at no extra cost, Netflix charges significantly more for it. Even those who only want a normal HD resolution have to pay more, not to mention 4K. According to Golem.de, Netflix claims that the reduction in quality is only very slight and that it's only noticeable to people who value the highest possible video quality. In our own opinion, however, we are currently seeing a noticeable worse picture quite often, compared to the time before the restrictions. Especially for Netflix, the critical question has to be allowed when the visible quality will be raised to the regular value again, especially for those customers who pay a surcharge for a higher resolution, and thus also for higher quality. Have you noticed the loss of quality? Which streaming service do you use and who do you think has the best quality at the moment? Please let us know in the comments. Up to now, Hollywood has not really had much success in the field of mangas and anime. Nevertheless, the mostly very imaginative series from the Far East still enjoy great popularity. And while there is currently a One Piece and a Cowboy Bebop live-action adaption being worked on, Sony Pictures is already working on a film adaption of One Punch Man. The origins of One Punch Man lie in the Japanese webcomic by the artist One, which has been running since 2009 and has also been converted into an anime in 2015. The story revolves around Saitama, who one day decides to become a hero. After years of training, the good Saitama has to struggle with circular hell loss, but in return he can also finish off his opponents with a single punch. The story is a mixture of superhero tribute and a bit of parody, and so it is supposed to be adapted for a live-action movie. 
The film One Punch Man will be made by Arad Productions, which is named after the co-founder of the Marvel Studios and is also managed by him. Venom authors Jeff Pinkner and Scott Rosenberg are responsible for the script. The duo not only wrote the story for Venom for Sony Pictures, but also the screenplay for the two new Jumanji films. Pinkner is also the executive producer of the other anime live-action version of Cowboy Bebop. Even if you're a die-hard anime fan who is very critical of the real-life adaption, you won't be able to deny that at least the right people are involved in the project. Unfortunately, a release date for the One Punch Man real adaption hasn't been fixed yet. Further news are also available for fans of Neon Genesis Evangelion, who, after an eight-year wait for the final film of the rebuild of Evangelion franchise, which was scheduled for June 27, 2020, now have to wait even longer due to the pandemic. However, to cheer up fans a bit, the responsible studio, Studio Kara, has announced to make the first three movies of the series available for free on their official YouTube channel until April 30th. It should be noted, however, that only the Japanese version with English subtitles can be found there. The rebuild of Evangelion franchise started in 2007 with Evangelion 1.0 and functioned as a reboot of the original series Neon Genesis Evangelion from 1995. But while the first movie covered the first five episodes of the original series, the second movie, Evangelion 2.0, completely stood out and also introduced new characters. The last movie of the series, Evangelion 3.0, was released in 2012. But a new release of the final movie of the series, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, has yet to be announced because so far it's only known that it will be postponed.